All right, welcome back to the channel and to the Katie and Castellan guide. In the last episode, we covered how to paint the face and today we're gonna look at the distressed leathers. All of the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description along with the link to the PDF, so let's get into it. All right, after the last guide, you should be looking somewhere around this. Today we're gonna have a crack at getting the leathers done. So we have two different leather sections that we're gonna cover. We're gonna start with the brown leathers. So I wanna make sure that we have a nice base, a nice dark base at that. So I'm gonna take some burnt sienna umber and apply that all over the brown leathers. So that's gonna be the holster, the strap that runs across the chest and the back, and then the scabbard as well. So take your time whenever you're doing this, ensure that you don't get any paints onto the creams, the greens, or the reds. There's also the belt on this model, which I kind of forgot about earlier, uh, but it's also gonna be brown and this pocket on the back. So one or two passes, get a nice even coat all over these areas, and ensure we have a nice foundation to work from. Oh yeah, there's also these leather straps that attach the shoulder guards to the arms. They're also gonna be brown. There's actually quite a lot of brown leather parts on this that are very small. So we're then gonna take burnt sienna umber and buff. Again, keeping that sort of continuity and consistency across the model by using the same highlight color across all of these pieces. Um, we're gonna mix that in to the burnt sienna umber and we're gonna start to look to create texture and detail within our leather. So we're looking at hitting the raised sections, the edges, places where you would experience wear and tear or stress on the material and start to give that distressed, worn look to our leather. And I build up that texture via stippling, scratching, hashing, using different techniques to build up different kinds of texture, different shapes, different lines, and different bits of information that we can build on with our highlight colors. So you'll see I'm focusing on the edges of straps, the edges of the holster, the edges of the pouch, you know, where things might be applying pressure and stretching the leather. These are all areas where it'll crack, it'll break, and we can add in more detail and information in these spaces. And the flaps as well, whenever they're, you know, being lifted and put down again, put strain on the material. With the scabbard, it's a bit more structurally sound. Um, generally it's, well, I guess wood-based and then leather wrapped. So you wanna just be hitting the edges of that, you know, where it might be, you know, hit during combat or whatnot. We're then gonna add more buff to the mix and we're gonna refine our highlight pattern again really start to focus in on these areas of wear and tear, like where the buckle rests against the leather, where you have uh, loops and straps that uh, you know hold things in place. And we're gonna start to bring in additional lines and texture to these areas. You can see that it's kind of getting a bit desaturated at the minute, but we're not too worried about that because we're gonna bring back that color later. So I'm just working around all of these sections that we've painted brown continuing to accentuate the texture that we're building up, bring more attention to the areas where there would be wear and tear and damage to the leather, and bring more detail and structure to these shapes. So you can see I'm still using different techniques to build up the texture here. I'm still using slashes, hashes, stippling, scratching, letting the brush move freely across the surface to create that variance and that detail. Don't try to create anything too symmetrical or you know, don't think about it too much, just sort of let it happen because then it's more organic, it looks more natural and it appears to be more real. Again with the scabbard, because it's a bit more you know, structurally sound. The wear and tear only really happens around the edges and various places like that. Obviously you can use scabbards in like hand-to-hand -hand combat as well alongside a sword. So there may be slashes or cuts in this that have come about through, you know, um, engaging in combat. So take that into account. Think about the story. Think about the narrative that you're creating for this character. 
you know, if it was maybe someone of a higher rank, there wouldn't be as much damage to his, uh, his leathers or his scabbard and pouches and stuff. He may have something that's a bit more pristine, well kept. But each to their own, you know, think about it and, you know, play around, use your imagination, see what you can come up with for your characters. Add a bit more buff into the mix again and really start to target the brightest areas. So this is probably going to be like one of our last highlights at this point. So I'm being very selective with where I put my highlights, really exaggerating some of the slashes and some of the damage within the leathers. But I am still focusing on areas of light here as well. So places where our primary light is coming in, I want to ensure that I have nice bright highlights within my leathers in those areas. So that's like the arm across the chest, uh, down onto like one side of the holster. Part of the belt as well. I wouldn't necessarily worry about having the leathers on the back being as high value as the leathers on the front. So you can see I'm just picking out smaller spaces, areas where there might be more damage, where that fold is in the leather, you know, where it'd be moving up and down quite a lot. And then on the back, we're being a lot more selective with how we apply this. We'll also be applying more glazes over the back to help darken this down. You can see I'm really working with the tip of my brush at this point because I want my lines and my damage and my details here to be extremely sharp. We're also using this to create gradients through the scabbard as well. You can see as we get closer to the top, the values lower, and then as we get closer to the bottom, the values a bit higher. So we're now taking some burnt sienna umber and dark violet. As I said in the previous videos, dark violet is our mother color for pretty much most of the components, if not all the components within this model. So I'm using a mix of those two colors to apply a glaze or a filter because we're applying it all over these surfaces uh, to bring back that saturation and bring back the color that we lost by using buff as the highlight color. I think I've said this in a couple of the videos now that you know whenever we introduce higher value, we desaturate and we bring back that saturation with these filters and with these glazes. Super, super important that we bring those back to keep that saturated, punchy look to our model. And you can apply multiple coats of this filter or this glaze um, to you know, bring back that saturation until you're happy with the color. Once I'm done with the glazing or the filters, I just come in with a couple of highlights along the front of the model, just to bring a bit more attention to the detail, the deeper slashes, the areas where there's more damage and more wear and tear. Just makes it a bit more visually appealing and it also keeps that high value front versus the lower value back on the model. Just bringing a wee bit more attention to the holster because it's quite a large space on the front of the model. So we want to make sure that it's interesting to look at and it's going to be an area that one of our leading lines passes over. So people are going to be well drawn to look at it. So we want to make sure that there's enough information that it's visually appealing, but doesn't detract too much from the overall composition. So if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now we're going to get on to the black leather. So we're going to start off with Mars Black. Put down a nice even foundation over the glove. The other hand is actually a metal hand, so we don't need to worry too much about that. And then the boots. There's also a visor 
on the cap, which I'm assuming is also gonna be black leather, and then this collar that he has as well. So we're gonna be painting all of those in the black leathers. Taking some buff, add that into your Mars black and continue to build up those highlights or start to build up those highlights, I should say. Again, focus on the areas where you would get natural wear and tear. So on the glove, it'll be around the fingers and the knuckles where we're putting strain on the leather. On the boots, it would be areas that you might scuff, either you kicked something, you know, you drag your foot. So around the toe, where your toe bends as well, there'll be a natural crease there. So you wanna add some detail in there. And then around the heel as well, where you're applying pressure or where the boot drips, drips, droops. There you go, droops around the ankle. Uh, we wanna bring in a bit more, uh, a bit more detail there, indicate that there's some wear and tear and damage. With the visor, again, we're just focusing on the highlight direction here from our primary light. So we're looking to highlight towards the left-hand side of the visor, just so everything aligns. And then with the collar, we're just bringing in some detail and shape to this to bring out that cylindrical shape around the neck. We do wanna add in some highlights towards the back as well, because even though it's in shadow, we still need that detail. Now starting to refine this pattern by adding in more buff starting to be more selective with our highlights using the tip of the brush here to bring out that detail to add in those scratches, those stipples, those hashes, and bring more attention to the damage and wear and tear in the boot. So we continue to build this up very, very similar to how we did for the brown leathers, but we apply the same principles here bringing up those highlights, adding in more detail, adding in more texture, adding more information. And we're exaggerating quite a lot of our highlights here because we are gonna come back in with a glaze or a filter and tone things down. So we're not afraid to push our highlights, push the value because we can always bring it back down. We can always glaze over it. So we're really going for those spaces that align with our lighting pattern and also bring attention to the damage and the shape of the volume. So on the head, we just continue to accentuate the highlights that align with our lighting pattern. So we wanna bring more attention to the, the quality of the leather along the left-hand side of the face. We are still bringing in more highlights to the right, but we gotta think about starting to increase the value more so on the left-hand side. We then add more buff into our mix and you know really start to target the areas that have the most wear and tear or the areas that are being affected by the light. So again, we're really starting to work with the tip of the brush here. We're being very precise with where we're applying these details and where we're applying the damage. So you can see I'm starting to pick out where the foot would bend, starting to bring more attention to the stress that there would be on the leather there. And again, around the ankle where the boot would be flexing, we wanna bring more detail into those areas. Just helps again to build that narrative, create that story about our guy actually being out on the battlefield, spending more time moving around 
rather than being at the back and just commanding. So we're now going to come in with a glaze or a filter of Mars black here. We're going to use this to reduce the value of our of our highlights. So applying this over the top will drop down the value and create a filter on top of that. This will just help to smooth out our transitions as well and create a bit more um, richness to the black within the shadows. We're also going to apply this over the glove as well, ensure that everything sort of matches and it's all consistent across the model. Same again on the head, we're going to apply this over the, the leather on the collar and the visor. So repeat this step one more time, again to drop down the value of our highlights, but also just to bring back more of that black tone within the leathers. As we continue to add more buff, the boots start to become a bit more grey than they were black, so this just helps to ensure that we're portraying black leather and not like a grey leather. Or those highlights and covered more space with our highlight colour, it started to become a bit more grey rather than black, so bringing this, uh, applying this filter and this glaze of black just helps to bring that all back. So now we're going to add some dark violet into our Mars black glaze. This is our opportunity to bring back that mother colour into the black leathers. We're going to use this to deepen and enrich the shadows or the deepest or the darkest parts of the boot. This just introduces a bit of warmth into the black, makes it a bit more rich in the shadows and creates a bit of additional contrast. Because we've only added a small amount of the dark violet, it'll be quite subtle, but it'll still be noticeable and it'll have a nice effect in the black or in the black leather. After you've applied your glazes, you may want to come back in with a bit more of your brightest highlight mix so that Mars black that's predominantly buff and just pick out one or two areas in certain places that you might get additional wear and tear, like around the toe, maybe at the fold, just one or two spots. Don't be too aggressive with this highlight, be very, very selective with where you apply it. Just use it to accentuate parts of the detail that you've added in to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more exciting. So just a couple of wee touches like that really help just to bring out those details that we spent that time building up during the sort of sketching, hashing, stippling phase. And we're doing the same on the visor as well. We wanna make sure that it aligns with our light map um, and brings attention to this particular side of the face. And then coming in with some Mars Black and just deepening down some of those shadows, creating more separation between where the gold Aquila is and where the highlight starts on the visor. So I'm just adjusting some of the highlights here just to bring back some more of those uh, mid-tones, so those darker tones that we had mixed previously to try and shorten and sharpen that highlight point in the visor. So I've now taken some titanium white and some buff and I just want to sort of accentuate the highlight here just to give the impression that the visor has maybe a bit more of a, a reflective quality to it or a bit more of a shine. Maybe the leather's in better condition because it's not being handled or moved as much as the rest of the parts on the model. So after you've finished the highlight adjustments on the head, it should look a bit more like this. So you can see that we've accentuated the highlights more towards the left-hand side of the face, bringing attention to those brighter values. So you can see the distressed look that we have to a number of the leather components that wear, that tear, that damage from years of battle or years of maintaining this uniform.
You can see how those leathers really complement the overall aesthetic that we're going for. The difference in finish contrasting nicely with the finish of the armor and the finish of the cream materials. They kind of complement with the reds and the purples and the plums that we have because they also convey a certain amount of texture. If you'd like to see how I painted the rest of this model, head on over to the Patreon and sign up. You'll get access to all of the guides, all of the tutorials and all of the PDFs. So if you're not part of the Discord, be sure to join so you can share some pictures with me, get some feedback and ask questions throughout this process. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed project. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All links can be found below in the description.